Hello everyone, Namaste. Welcome back to my channel Academic Tuber. Today we are going to discuss Unit 7 from Grade 10 Science that is Force and Motion. Before that, if you are new to the channel, please subscribe the channel and for more updates, hit the bell icon. And if you want more videos related to this, please like and do share the video among your friends and also don't forget to give your valuable response in the comment section. Geocentric or Ptolemaic theory. It is says that Earth remains at the center of universe and the sun, satellites and other heavenly bodies revolve around the earth. The word itself is giving its definition. Geo means earth and centric means at center. Similarly, heliocentric theory. Helio means sun, centric means at center. So which is say that Sun is at the center of universe and the earth, satellite and other heavenly bodies revolve around the sun. Gravitation. The force of attraction between the two bodies in the universe is called gravitation. Gravitation, it was first uh, propounded by uh, Newton. Newton's universal law of gravitation. It is says that the force of attraction between two bodies in the universe is directly proportional to the product of their masses and inversely proportional to the square of distance between their center. Which means that when mass of body increases, force of attraction increases and when distance between uh, the body increases, force of attraction decreases. And it was propounded in 1687 AD. Prove F equals to G M on M2 by D square or we can say this is the explanation of the Newton's law of gravitation. So let us consider two bodies of masses M1 and M2 which are kept at a distance d between their centers. Let F be the force of attraction between them. So here are two bodies M1 and M2. Between them is uh, denoted by capital F and the distance between their center is D. So according to Newton's law of gravitation, the force of attraction between two bodies is directly proportional to the product of their masses. That is, if a mass of body increases, force of attraction increases and vice versa. Similarly, force of attraction between two bodies is inversely proportional to the square of distance between their center. That is, if the distance between the center increases, force of attraction decreases and vice versa. So combining equation 1 and 2, we get F proportion to M1 M2 by D square or F equals to G M1 M2 by D square where G is known as the universal gravitational constant hence F equals to G M1 M2 by D square proved. So Newton's law of gravitation is called universal law. So Newton's law of gravitation is called universal law because it holds true and is applicable for all the body present in the universe whether the object is terrestrial inside the earth or celestial outside earth. The gravitational force exists everywhere in the universe. That is the reason Newton's law of gravitation is called universal law. Universal gravitational constant. Universal gravitational constant, it is the force of attraction between two bodies of unit masses which are separated by unit distance between their center and its value is 6.67 into 10 to the power minus 11 newton meter square per kg square. The value of uh, universal gravitational constant was first calculated by Henry Cavendish using Cavendish balance or we can say sensitive balance. Yes, a unit of universal gravitational constant. So we know formula to calculate the force of gravitation that is F equals to G M on M2 by D square. So we know G equals to F D square by M on M2. So for S a unit of force is uh, uh, Newton, uh, that of distance is meter and that of mass is kg. So and finally we get uh, Newton meter square per kg square. The value of universal gravitational constant is 6.67 into 10 to the power minus 11 newton meter per uh, newton meter square per kg square what does it mean it means that the force of 6.67 into 10 to the power minus 11 newton acts between two bodies of 1 kg masses kept at 1 meter uh, apart from their centers 
now we are going to discuss variation of gravitational uh, with mass when masses of both of both objects are double keeping distance constant so what would be the change in the gravitational force when the mass of both objects are doubled keeping the distance constant so let us consider two bodies of masses m1 and m2 which are separated by distance c between their center we know that the formula to uh, we know the formula to calculate gravitation that is f equals to g m1 m2 by d square according to the question masses of both objects are double that is m1 equals to 2m1 and m2 equals to 2m2 and d equals to d because distance it is kept constant then uh, the new gravitational force becomes f1 equals to g 2m1 dot 2m2 by d square or f1 equals to g 4m1 m2 by d square and uh, we get f1 equals to 4 g m1 m2 by d square so in place of g m1 m2 by d square we can write f from the equation 1 hence we came to know that when the masses of both objects are doubled keeping the distance constant gravitational force it is increased by four times similarly variation of gravitation with distance when distance between them is double keeping mass constant so let us consider two bodies of masses m1 and m2 which are separated by distance d between their centers let f be the force of gravitation we know the formula to calculate force of gravitation that is f equals to g m1 m2 by d square so which we are going to consider this as equation one according to the question so masses are kept constant that is m1 equals to m1 and m2 equals to m2 but here in question i'm when distance between them is doubled so d uh, so equals to 2d then new gravitational force it is given by f1 equals to g capital uh, g m1 m2 by 2d whole square so f1 equals to g m1 m2 by 4d square so f1 equals to 1 by uh, 4 f so in place of g m1 m2 by d square we can write f from equation 1 hence when distance between them is double keeping the masses constant gravitational force it is decreased by four times next one is gravity the force with which planet earth attracts every object to its center is called gravity and its SI unit is newton let us consider capital m be the mass of earth on which object having small m is placed at a distance d from the center of earth so here the force of attraction between them is given by so we know the uh, formula to calculate gravitation uh, force of gravitation f equals to g m1 m2 by d square in case of planet or heavenly body or earth so this formula is slightly modified here f equals to g which is constant m1 uh, now it would be the mass of the uh, planet capital m m2 small m by r square which is the distance between the center weight the effect of gravity on mass of body is called weight and its SI unit is Newton. Mathematically, weight equals to mass into acceleration due to gravity that is W equals to mg. So here is one numerical. Uh, the, the earth has mass of 6 into 10 to the power 24 kg and its radius is 6380 km. What will be the weight of a body of mass 1 kg on the surface of earth? So here, uh, so mass of earth capital M it is given which is uh, 6 into 10 to the power 24 kg. Mass of body it is also given which is 1 kg. Radius of earth it is given 6380 kilometer. Uh, we know the uh, unit of distance is meter. So here in question it is given in kilometer. That's why we are converting kilometer into meter by multiplying with 1000. Universal gravitational constant equals to 6.67 into 10 to the power minus 11 newton meter square per kg square. The value of universal gravitational constant it might not be given in question, so we have to memorize this value. So we know that W equals to force equals to G capital M small m by R square, which is equals to 9.83 newton. So hence the weight of body of 1 kg mass on the surface of earth would be 9.83 newton now we are going to discuss uh, consequences uh, or effects of uh, gravity and gravitation 
So it helps the atmosphere to exist uh, surrounding the earth. It causes liquid to flow down. Gravity causes the weight of body and uh, rain, hail and uh, uh, hailstone and uh, snowfalls are the product of uh, force of gravity. It causes acceleration due to gravity on the body which uh, are thrown up or falling down. Acceleration due to gravity. The acceleration produced on a freely falling body due to the influence of gravity is called acceleration due to gravity. And its CSI unit is meter per second square. The, the average value of acceleration due to gravity it is 9.8 meter per second square. Uh, which means that uh, when the object falls towards the ground under the action of gravity, the velocity of falling object uh, increases at a constant rate of 9.8 meter per second for every second of time it is falling. So conclusion of Feather and Cohen experiment. Uh, Feather and Cohen experiment concludes that the acceleration produced in the freely falling body is same for all the bodies. Acceleration due to gravity, uh, it does not depend on the mass of a falling body in the absence of external resistance. That means acceleration due to gravity is independent to the mass of a falling body. So, proof G is inversely proportional to square of radius or to prove that acceleration due to gravity is independent to the mass of falling object. So let us consider uh, object of uh, mass is small m be placed on the place at a distance r from the center of the earth having a uh, mass capital M. Let f be the force of attraction between them. Now the uh, as per the Newton's uh, law of gravitation we know that f equals to g capital M is small m by r square this is a um, formula to calculate gravitation and according to newton's second law of motion we know that f equals to mg so equating equation one and two we get mg mg equals to g capital m is small m by r square m and m is small m is small m they get cancelled and g equals to gm by r square so hence g inversely proportional to r square since mass and uh, gra universal gravitational constant uh, are the constant quantities The value of g varies from place to place on the surface of earth y. So we know that the g is inversely proportional to the square of radius. That is r increases, g decreases and vice versa. And we know our earth is not perfectly round. It is flattened at the pole and bulging out at the equator. Similarly there are plains, hills, valley and mountains of various height on the surface of the earth. Hence the value of g it varies from place to place on our surface. So value of g at poles, uh, it is maximum uh, because polar radius it is uh, shorter, uh, 9.82 meter per second is square. Value of g is less at the equator because equator, so our earth is bulging out at the equator, making the equator radius greater than the polar radius. So value of g at equator is 9.78 meter per second is square and average value of g it is considered as 9.8 meter per second is square. Relation between g and height uh, from the surface of earth. So let us consider an object having mass m is placed at distance r from the center of the earth having mass capital M. Let f be the force of attraction between them. The value of g on the surface of the earth it is given by the formula g equals to gm by r square. So which is equation 1. And at height the value of g is given by g dash equals to gm. Uh, r plus h whole square which is equation 2. Dividing equation 1 by 2 we get uh, g at height equals to r by r plus h whole square into g. By solving uh, we get uh, g dash equals to r by r plus h whole square into g. So this is the relation between g and uh, height uh, from the earth surface. Relation between G and F D from the surface of Earth. So let us consider mass of uh, Earth is capital M and its radius is capital R. A body is kept at depth D from the surface, as shown in the figure. The value of G on the uh, surface of Earth is given by G equals to G M by R square, and uh, G dot D into four by R. Uh, 
whole 4 by 3 pi r cube by r square so we know the formula to calculate density density equals to mass by volume or uh, mass equals to density into volume and we know that the uh, formula to calculate volume of a spherical object is 4 by 3 pi r cube similarly at the depth value of g is given by g dash equals to gm by r minus t all square uh, which is equation 2 dividing equation 2 by equation 1 we get g dash equals to r minus t by r into g which is the relation between g and depth d from the surface of the earth so here are value of g on the heavenly bodies some uh, heavenly bodies g on moon it is uh, it is uh, 1.67 meter per second square g on jupiter uh, 25 meter per second square on mercury 3.62 meter per second square mars 3.75 meter per second square on earth 9.8 meter per second square free fall when a body falls freely under the influence of gravity alone negating air resistance it is called free fall in other words, if a body is falling with acceleration equal to the acceleration due to gravity, that is A equals to G, the body is said to be in the state of free fall. In fact, a body falling in a vacuum or in a space is in a real free fall. During free fall, the falling body is influenced by the force of gravity only. So here is one question, what is the difference between fall of parachute on the earth and that on the moon? There is atmosphere on the surface of earth which creates axonal resistance on the body falling towards the earth's surface. So a parachute does not fall freely on the earth's surface. But there is no atmosphere on the surface of moon so a parachute falls freely towards the surface of the moon. Okay, so uh, equation of motion. So equation of motion we have discussed this in grade 9 as well. So equation of motion we know that it is the equation that gives the relation between initial velocity u, final velocity v, time taken t, distance covered s, yes, acceleration a uh, is known as the equation of motion and there are four equation of motion v equals u plus a t, s equals to u plus v by 2 into t, s equals to u t plus half a t square and v square equals to u square plus 2as when a body is falling downward so in that case so a uh, becomes uh, uh, acceleration a is uh, equal to acceleration due to gravity and distance covered it is equal to height and when a body is shown vertically upward so uh, acceleration due to gravity uh, acceleration uh, equals to acceleration due to gravity so a equals to minus z and here distance is equal to height Differences between gravity and gravitation. Gravity depends on mass and radius of planet. Gravitation depends on mass of two bo bodies and uh, distance between their center. Gravity, the force of planet which uh, with which it attracts every object towards its center. And gravitation, it is the force of attraction between any two bodies in the universe. Next one, differences between acceleration due to gravity and universal gravitational constant. So acceleration due to gravity, it is the acceleration produced on a body under the influence of gravity. Whereas the universal gravitational constant, it is the force of attraction between two bodies of unit masses separated by unit distance between their centers. Unit means one. And its yes unit is uh, yes unit of acceleration due to gravity is meter per second square and that of universal gravitational constant is Newton meter square per kg square and we know that acceleration due to gravity it is not a constant quantity whereas universal gravitational constant it is constant quantity and here in difference between we can uh, also write uh, their values as well next one acceleration due to gravity and gravity acceleration due to gravity it is acceleration produced on a freely falling body due to the effect of gravity Whereas gravity, it is the force with which planet attracts every object to as its center. Its as unit is meter per second square and uh, gravity as unit is uh, Newton. And uh, acceleration due to gravity, it is effect whereas uh, 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 gravity it is a cause uh, to, of acceleration due to gravity. Free fall and weightlessness. Free fall, it is not possible in absence of gravity. Whereas weightlessness, it is possible in the absence of gravity as well.
free fall uh, when a body falls freely under in, uh, action of gravity it is free fall and uh, alone under the action of uh, gravity alone negating air resistance it is free fall whereas weightlessness it is the condition in which weight of a body of certain mass becomes zero weightlessness it is a condition at which the weight of a body uh, uh, certain mass becomes zero and uh, an object becomes weightless under the following conditions when uh, object is falling freely uh, a equals to z in the absence of acceleration due to gravity that is g equals to zero and in spacecraft where the reaction force is zero so astronaut they feel weightlessness in spacecraft why astronaut does not exert any force in the spacecraft due to this the reaction force is zero and hence astronaut feels weightless in the spacecraft uh, so next question a satellite does not need any energy to revolve around the planet why it is because of the balance centripetal and centrifugal force provided by the gravitational force uh, of earth and the satellite we do not get hot when we jump with parachute on earth why parachute opens and expands with uh, winds or parachutes or the paratrooper jumps larger the area of parachute more will be the air resistance so the acceleration of the parachute decreases due to which parachute is or the paratrooper falls down slowly hence we don't get hot when we jump with parachute next one a meteor becomes visible when it enters the earth atmosphere why when meteors enters into the atmosphere of the earth with high speed a lot of heat is produced due to the air resistance and this heat burns the material which is seen in the form of a streak of light shooting down the sky hence material uh, becomes visible when it enters earth atmosphere next one it is difficult to lift large stone on the surface of earth but easy to lift a uh, small one so we know that force of gravity is more in the large stone as it has more mass than in a small one Due to this, large stone has more load than a small stone. Hence, it is difficult to lift large stone on the surface of earth, but easy to lift a small one. Next question: A sheet of paper falls lighter on the earth's surface than that uh, the paper ball of equal weight when thrown from a certain height. Why? A sheet of paper experiences more air resistance than that of paper ball, as the surface area of sheet of paper is more than that of paper ball. Hence, a sheet of paper ball uh, falls lighter on the earth's surface than the paper ball of equal weight when thrown from the same height. Advantages of air resistance Air resistance helps paratrooper or parachutes to move down with a controlled velocity and land safely. Air resistance of atmosphere protects us from the shower of meteors. Air resistance protects us from the probable harmful effects of big size hills, and without air resistance, an aircraft cannot fly. These are some of the advantages of air resistance. Now we are going to discuss disadvantages of air resistance. Air friction makes flight difficult at high speed. So this is the disadvantage of the air resistance. By this we have completed note of this unit and let me remind you one thing uh, this is simply the note a uh, complete note of the unit force and motion and uh, I hope uh, this video was useful to you if you like this video please share with your friends and don't forget to subscribe and uh, if you have any queries drop the comment in the comment section see you on the next video thank you